APC exonerates Bahari and blames Jonathan for incubating terrorism. And Christians by mouth, devils in heart, Oshomole attacks Baba Chair Lawal. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anacone. The All Progressive Congress APC says it will be unfair for anybody to label the President, Major General Muhammad Buhari, retired a failure for not quelling the nation's insecurity challenges. The ruling party alleged that the immediate past administration of President Goodluck Jonathan was responsible for condoning insurgency and banditry until it became full-blown. The APC also accused the People's Democratic Party of being insensitive by leading other opposition members to rebel against the president over what could be a collective fight against terrorism. Now, disgruntled senators had threatened to impeach the president over the worsening insecurity ravaging the country. The presidency, in a statement by the president's spokesman, Garba Shehu, had described the action of opposition senators as babyish, advising them to put their time to a better use. Well, joining us to discuss this and break it down is Alester Wilcox, who's a chartered accountant and a public affairs analyst. And also joining us is Michael Achimogo, he's a media consultant. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Well, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Great. Uh, I'm going to start. Thank you and good evening. Great. I'm, I'm going to start with you, Michael, then I'll come to Alesta. Uh, Alesta is going to give us some background into what, we, what might be the reason for the APC um, taking this stance. But then I think, gentlemen, both of you understand what the country is facing right now in terms of insecurity. Um, we've seen that a lot of things are happening at the same time. Lecturers are on strike. Universities, obviously, uh, are not running except private universities. And we also have the issue of insecurity. There was recently um, some red alerts here in Lagos, which made um, a lot of people wonder what was, you know, in the radar. But then, of course, the police had come out to, um, you know, assuage our fears and, and say that they're on top of the matter. But then the APC is saying that the PDP is not speaking up um, on this issue, and they, they are simply trying to uh, rebel against the president. Um, Michael, what are your thoughts? Uh, is the PDP not necessarily playing the opposition as they should, as the APC did before it got into power in terms of dealing with the issue of insecurity? Well, um, how much opposition you can say is adequate will depend on what the benchmark is. I am aware that when APC was in the openly or wrongly about a lot of issues. Now, if you juxtapose um, against what the PDP is doing right now, then you could say that not enough is being done. Hmm. But where we are right now is no longer just a PDP matter. PDP are not the only opposition party in Nigeria. This is a battle for every Nigerian affected, you know, by this situation. I have a problem with the timing of the APC and with their lack of accountability, you know, over this issue. There's a reason why people voted for the APC in 2015, and that was to make things better than it was under the PDP. So, almost eight years later, and right in the midst of a very horrible security situation, this is not what the ruling party should be saying. They voted to sort this problem out in the past. Boko Haram used to attack soft targets. Now our last bus stop, which is the army, the military, are prey to these terrorists. And so if the military is falling under the APC government to terrorists, what hope for 200 million other Nigerians that are affected by this? PDP is no longer the issue here. APC should deal with this situation 
right now. Michael, I just want to push you further. When the APC were, was the opposition, we remember uh, Mr. President and members of his party pushed the PDP on these issues. In fact, one of the reasons why President Buhari was able to win the elections was because he promised that he was going to be able to deal with insecurity. In fact, chastised the government of the day because of what happened to the Chipok girls. We, I mean, we all remember it took a while for the government to actually um, agree to the fact that the girls were taken in the first instance and the opposition kept pushing on that matter. Now, let me go back again to what the APC is saying. They're saying that the PDP is not doing what it should. It, they sh it should be concerted efforts, in their words, that should help the president to deal with this. And the PDP is not doing that. So I'm wondering, how should the PDP do this? Or why are they not doing this? The oh, my APC are not being true to themselves, and they're not being true to Nigerians, and they are not ready to do their job. The PDP are not in charge of oh, Michael, I think the, the military or the paramilitary. Oh, the situation has been speaking out. You know, people from the Leicester parties, normal citizens like myself who do not have party affiliations. We have all spoken up, but we cannot send. Uh, Michael, Michael, out. Michael, we Michael, we're having, of we're having connection issues we with you. Michael, I'm so sorry. We're having connection issues with you and we're getting a little feedback. I don't know whose TV is on, but we're getting a little feedback and it's very difficult for us to hear you. So we're going to try to see if we can fix you. But let's go to Alester. Alester, I mean, there's no need to regurgitate what's been happening in the country. You and I are uh, present in Nigeria and we've been seeing what's happening. As of yesterday, the story that hit us is that uh, the government, the federal government approved um, money for vehicles to help fight insecurity in Niger Republic. Uh, and let's not forget that a few people were released by um, kidnappers of uh, the uh, people who were victims of the train attack in um, Kaduna. Um, and, and most of those people who came out had said that government didn't have a hand in their release. Um, ASU, like I said earlier, on our strike, and one would wonder if these monies were given to deal with the issue of ASU, at least it would have gone a long way, wouldn't it? And, 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 and why should the PDP be carrying the burden of a government that is in power? Well, you have put so many questions together. Thank you very much for having me after a very long time. Let me try and see if I can uh, dissect all the questions you put together. Well, first, with the issue of ASU, if you give them 1.4 billion, you are not doing anything. I mean, you are not scratching the surface. As you're looking for about 500 and something billion. And of course, the government must run. So if you give the 1.4 billion, 1.1 billion used for those vehicles, you are not, you've done nothing. I mean, that's not even enough to pay salary of, uh, of two universities for a month. Anyway, uh, talking about the PDP, the PDP has no capacity to do anything. They've not had any capacity to do anything. So, and that is why we find ourselves in this situation. If they had had the capacity to have dealt with, um, decisively or do more in, in do more when they were in power with respect to Boko Haram and other and other issues. I, I don't think we'll have gotten to the high hydrate murder, murder it becomes because I also remember I can't hold brief for any government. Like you said, I don't know why the, P, uh, the APC is saying what they say. I'm not a member of APC, but I know that uh, if they had, uh, if the past government, right from the time of um, Yaradua, when this issue started, uh, if they had done what is needful as a then, they will have maybe need nip it in the board. But unfortunately, uh, they did it. Rather, generals were um, amassing wealth, properties. We all know what happened during the I mean, exposures of how a lot of uh, military generals uh, have we are, we, are, we are fingers in corruption charges and all. So the money made for those arms we are, we are, we are diverted and used for personal purposes. I mean, we've seen a lot of them being put on trial and a lot of them being been uh, made to reform huge sums of money. So for me, that's that, 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 on, if you're on that premises, yes. But uh, at this point, if APC is expecting uh, PDP to do anything, then that is um, that is it. That that is that is wishful thinking or a full paradise, because the PDP has no capacity, even to be a viable opposition. They cannot. They have no capacity to so talk less of uh, contributing meaningfully to national discourse. I mean, so they are, they, they are like the terrorists hit and run. 
they scratch here, they scratch there. There is no concerted opposition position that they've taken ever since they left power. So when they're in power, they're incapable. When they're out of power, so they're incapable. So I don't think the PDP and the APC should be expecting anything sensible from the PDP. It's rather, it's rather looking for fish in the Sahara Desert. You know, so the APC should wake up. They have had a lot of successes and they've had a lot of backfalls. Now, if you look at when they took over power, like the Tazobu been said, Boko Haram was holding the size of Belgium, about 16 to, is this how uh, many local governments in uh, Boronu and uh, Boronu Yobe and Adama State? They are holding those, 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 those documents, but it's a caliphate. But as of today, we must just admit one thing Boko Haram is on the back foot. And, that was, and it was not true that as of then, they were only doing soft target. As of then, during the time of Jonathan, they bombed the Fair Headquarters. They bombed Abuja several times. Military barracks in Boronu and that were ransacked. So, uh, 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 so you, you, police headquarters was bombed. So it was not true that then it was only soft target. They were bombing serious targets. But this government tried and rolled back, brought back the cheap, some cheap old girls, and then this thing escalated to the northeast, to the northwest. The main issue we're having now is the Northwest, which started as banditry, and then, and it was not really started. And then, but unfortunately, and sadly, to some of us, they have not been able to step up the game, step up the game as to as to tame it and bring it to subjection. This is not to this is not to undermine the sacrifices of our military men, of our brothers and women and, and, and sisters in uniform. These are the people that take the brunt of what is happening in the in the in, in the theater of war. Okay. So they have paid a lot of sacrifices. Some have lost their life. Some have lost families. So, but so they are working. But how they have not been able to tame this high dead mother? I think the APC should take full responsibility because the buck stopped on their table because they're in power. They are the government in power. The buck stopped on their table, so they must take full responsibility for they are not being able to have stemmed the tide. Not to say they have not done far more than they, I mean, I mean, if, let, if, if I have to be honest, they have done quite a lot, especially that Bruno Aziz, they have cleared a lot of things. They have, they have pursued them out of the cities. Okay. Life has returned to normalcy I, 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 in those I'm areas. Curious. Yeah, of course, I, they I, keep eating, they uh, left, left Alistair, right. Alistair, I want to come in there. Interesting that you are you know, telling us all of these things that you think that the uh, the APC government has done. Uh, they, You said that Boko Haram is on the back foot, but then we have something that's a little worse than Boko Haram. Boko Haram may have been somewhat depleted, uh, and now we have ISWAP. We have these killer um, kidnappers. We, they started from unknown gunmen to herdsmen. They have all kinds of names, but then... The, the horror that they're meting out on people, not just in the north right now, but almost, almost across the country. Um, I want to ask a very simple question. Is it easier and better now compared to the PDP government? You even went all the way to the Yaradua administration to, you know, play the blame game. So how has the APC changed the situation of security uh, in this country? Is it been for the better or is it for the worse? Because we're comparing now. You went all the way down to the Yaradar administration. What has the APC been able to do for us in terms of stemming the tide of insecurity? Well, sometimes we suffer in this country from selective amnesia and uh, we forget our yesterday so fast that we take the today's problem to equate what happened yesterday. Um, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not a member of the APC. Uh, I've never been a member of any party, but I, I try to present the issues clearly. If you can go back in time, and, and why I said Yaradua was because the concept of Boko Haram started from that period when um, uh, Mahmoud Yusuf, what was his name, was, um, was uh, arrested and executed by the police, which ignited this whole thing. That was during the Yaradua administration. So, and then Jonathan inherited it, and uh, it escalated to the point that. Uh, uh, Buhari has inherited it in 2015. And the first thing they have to deal with is the Chibok issue. Now, if you ask, uh, don't forget, don't forget that as far back as 2003, 2004, 
kidnapping in the South South. High level scissors was, was the order of the day. You are from the South South, and you know, if you if you live in Portacourt, you know that you cannot go out in Portacourt City during those periods. You can't, there was no nightlife. The entire Eastern region, Osisi, Kanku, and Co., we are holding sway. We are holding sway in the Eastern part of the country. People don't go to their village again. That was the kidnapping of those days. Very high level kidnapping. And then, unfortunately, uh, you have you have you have you have followed the bandwagon to to say it is the 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 remnant of Boko that are now the kidnappers all over the country. I don't As think. I don't, I don't think. Um, well, Alastair, I don't think I said that. I said we're dealing with something different. You you said that Boko Haram is on the back foot. So please quote me correctly. You're the one who's saying that Boko Haram, the APC government, has succeeded in you know putting it on the back foot. And I'm saying. We're dealing with a, a much bigger situation. And I'm asking, how has the APC government been able to successfully make this different from what they inherited? Because okay, all of these okay, successive okay, okay, governments... Let me get that. No, I'm I sorry, got that. I got just that. hold I got on. That. There is no... For all of these people you've mentioned, President Buhari and the APC government is the only government that had campaigned mostly on the insecurity, and they promised that they were going to decimate Boko Haram and put an end to terrorism. But here we are. Yes, if you if you live in Boronu, if you live in Yobe, or if you live in Adamawa, um, you, 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 maybe, 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 your, maybe your assessment will be different from mine, because I remember there was a time before this government came, all academic football club does no football team plays in Medugri. And, and there, 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 were, there, were, there were camps IDP camps. So if you live in Bonu, maybe you live in Yobe, you've been you be in Adamawa, that we are at the epic center of program activity. I'm sure you are, your, your assessment will be different. Now, okay. if you live in Zamfara, if you live in Zamfara and um, in the part of the northwest, part of the northwest, of course, your assessment will be different. That for what? Because we used to have the theater and northeast. Now it moved to northwest. And then there was an addition. The the ISWAP. The ISWAP is not a domestic a Nigerian a, a Nigerian terrorist group. It is a terrorist group that is, is even Boko Haram that cut across the entire West African region. Okay. Uh, uh, Alessa, I'm Nigerian so sorry. I'm so sorry to talk over you. I think that we have Michael back on the line. So let's give Michael some airtime uh, to speak uh, okay. I don't think that we want to do a history class on ISWAP right now. No, uh, no history is good. Ma Michael, Michael would like to he would like to hear what you think. Uh, Alessa is is been giving us some history classes on this, but he's yet to answer my question. So I'll throw it to you. How has Nigeria changed since Buhari came in? after the promise of helping us to deal with insecurity, as opposed to where we are right now? Well, uh, Miriam, for a government that promised so much and won the elections on the back of those promises, um, the APC have performed very badly. In 2014, um, I could leave Abuja alone all by myself and drive to Kaduna by 8 p.m., in fact, I remember that the, on the eve of the 2015 elections, I left Abuja by 10 p.m. solo to drive to Mina so I could vote the next day. Today, it's not possible to do so. Also remember that in the Jonathan government, they were hampered by the Leahy law in America where they couldn't buy weapons from the United States. This administration has been given a lot of military hardware. We have the Tucano jets, which have done more harm to innocent villagers than to the actual terrorists they're supposed to be bombing. Under the PDP, terrorism was contained within a certain part of the country. As a matter of fact, I remember that the 2016 elections, there was a postponement, right? So that they could do a security sweep of some of those northern states so that elections could hold that. Mercenaries were brought in and they got the job done and elections happened in those places. APC even won in those northern states. Today, you cannot say you want to run from Abuja to say Lagos for safety because nowhere is as safe as they used to be in the past anymore. I think that the APC bringing up this kind of conversation now when they should be 
explain to us the recent events, especially both the, the Kujie prison break and the attacks on our military boys who are paying the supreme price on our behalf, you know, around Zuma Rock. This is a distraction, and it is classic gaslighting on the part of this government. It should not be allowed to, we should not be derailed from the real conversations. This government was voted to make Nigeria better. Admittedly, there were issues in that government. That was why people voted this government to make it better. APC should be bold enough to come out and admit that they have failed and ask Nigerians for help or better still, have leave the, the, the seat of power so that somebody else who can do the job can come and get this job done. I remember King Mohalo seen recently during his campaign before his primaries and even afterwards that Nigeria should import mercenaries. The other countries do these things when things get out of hand. Now, like you rightly said, Mary, we are no longer dealing with just Boko Haram. We have different nomenclatures for different uh, insurgents around the country. And I'm still even wondering why a Nigerian court would label these so-called bandits as terrorists until today the media, mainstream media, still refers to them as bandits and the government is not insisting they be named terrorists. Our, um, our military chiefs here, uh, they, they drive mostly innocent vehicles, right? But we are busy buying luxury cars for Niger Republic at a time when things are this bad as students are at home, people are, in, even in Abuja, we are not safe. So this is a very huge destruction should not be allowed to stand. Um, it, and I'm not going to hold brief for Mr. President, but recently the president had been quoted to say that he's done his best. Um, and um, he, uh, a lot of people, he didn't go down well with a lot of people. But then uh, what exactly do we expect um, from Mr. President and the government? I, I mean, we've seen and heard the government say, oh, we're going to decimate. We're going to do whatever it takes to bring these people to book. But then let's go to what's happened recently. In a bid to find solutions, the media, who always takes half of the blame uh, for not reporting properly or not reporting anything, um, decided that they were going to go into, you know, the deep north to find out exactly what is at the, um, you know, at the core of this um, insecurity. Uh, we saw the BBC um, and, of course, um, Trust TV do a, put out a documentary uh, that somewhat gave us a, an understanding of what's happening uh, that is trickling all the way down to where we are right now. Uh, but we also saw the reactions of government. And I want to I ask you and Alesta what your thoughts are on what the government, the government's position. The government, I'd like to quickly say, uh, said that the, these media houses were glamorizing uh, terrorism in the country and, and that they will be sued or sanctioned. I'll start with you, um, Michael, quickly before we go back to Alesta. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? Because we're looking for solutions, and these people try to give us an idea as to where we can start to deal with this. I mean, some people would say that's what they were doing. But then there are other people who have the school of thought that they should not have in any way uh, given a face to these people, hence they're glamorizing, um, you know, these terrorists. If, if this government has any altruistic reason for saying this, it's going to be difficult for them to convince Nigerians about it because they do have a history of gagging the press. You know, it's not too long ago we had the Twitter ban here in Nigeria. You know, um, media houses being forced to pay fines for things that are, you know, regular journalism, you know. Um, if I was this government, I wouldn't have come out to make, uh, make a big deal of this. If they have an alternative fact or truth, they should have done their own documentary so they could convince Nigerians. I, 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 I think that they, they, they are running away from the truth. It offends them every time some of these facts that they want to hide, you know, are exposed. And you see, let's not forget that there have been allegations that this government colludes with these people. While I cannot confirm that, there are scenarios that, that made Nigerians have doubts about government sincerity, you know, about fighting terrorism. We've had terrorists come out to say, look, we're sponsored by this government. And I remember Alaji Bukaje, who used to be an APC uh, stalwart, coming out as well to say, look, these terrorists were brought in by the, by the APC when I was there so that we could win an election. The government has not convinced Nigerians um, uh, that these allegations are untrue. 
you know, and um, trying to gag. I hear they have fined some media houses five million naira, including DSTV, you know, and all of that. Um, this is not what we need at the moment. The government is not sincere. Okay. Unfortunately, I am not enthusiastic and hopeful about their ability to deal with this situation. If the Nigerians have been on overdrive, you know, they have given up and waiting for elections next year, hoping for a Messiah to come and deliver them. All Unfortunately, right. it seems now like even waiting for 2023 is no longer just enough because at this rate, I wonder if we'll even survive to that time. Alester, um, the, the, um, I think um, the Bornu state governor, if I'm not mistaken, um, ha in fact, Governor Zulum was the first governor to say um, maybe it's time for us to defend ourselves as it has come down to you know, us looking for ways to protect ourselves. Um, again, uh, the Borneo State Governor recently also spoke about us doing whatever we can, even if it means biting these people who are coming to attack us. Uh, being that, again, it looks like there is not enough political will um, to deal with this issue of insecurity. So I ask you, what is the hope of the average Nigerian, especially the people who are facing the heat uh, of this insecurity in the North? Let me take exception to your last comment on me that I was not giving you the answers. If you bring me to your program and I give you my time, then you should be able to uh, give me some respect and credit when I answer your question. You, you allow my colleague to make all these allegations and you, you, you admitted all of them as correct and authentic. And, and then when I speak, you are telling me I didn't make the part. I don't think, I don't think anybody has accepted the, anybody's and the, and the, opinion. And the, and the, and the, but unless that, we do not have too much time, so right. I really want you to answer my questions. Now, no, uh, Again. that's why I'm on air, and so, and so I need that uh, respect. Eh? I need you to answer Maybe my now. questions. Now, 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 now Miriam, let's, let's put it this way. When my brother said in 2014 he was saving Abuja, I wanted to remind him how many bomb blasts took place from 2011 to 2000. And this thing, 2015 in Abuja, where he was living, I just let him, if he can answer that, and then then fine. Now, if you're talking about Governor Zulu, Governor Zulu is a, I a mean, good young man and a, a performing governor, and he has moved the Christ all around Borno State. Yes, I, I do not admit, I, I, I do not tell you there are no pockets of, of resistance of Boko Haram, but how many of Boko Haram leaders do you still know? So sometimes we should give credit to our country. It's not to run that the country every day. Because you want to run the government, and the press is good at that. The, the, the British government banned their media from reporting IRA activities in the 80s. The British government, the owner of Media Freedom, banned media houses from reporting IRA activities. But in Nigeria, what do we get? When the military does good, we don't report it. But when the terrorist does this, we blow it. And sometimes it is out of proportion we blow things that makes my brother to think they cannot drive to they cannot drive to Mina. I have destroy this country by road. Maybe, maybe I'm lucky, but so many Nigerians are doing that. So if you say it's not possible, then that's uncharitable. That does not exclude the fact that the APC government has not, I repeat, has not performed to the experience of Nigerians in respect of being able to stem the tide of uh, the banditry that has now changed to terrorists in the Northeast. But like I said again, if you are living in the Northeast, Bornu, Adamawa, Yobe, I'm sure your story will be different. I'm sure your story will be different. What is because the hope? What is the hope? I'll ask one more time. What is the hope of the average Nigerian going forward? The hope of the average man is, is the fact that the average man is on the street every day. Thousands of them travel Nigeria routes and they get to that destination safely. Millions of them travel around. So their hope is that there is hope in the fact that we're Nigerian and you have the hope that you're a Nigerian and you are living in Nigeria. And you are surviving Nigeria, and you keep people surviving Nigeria. Okay. That is that. That's just the hope. I don't know what else you want me to give you. That's the hope. Okay. Well, you live in Nigeria. You live in Nigeria. You travel around Nigeria. Yes, there are incidents on the uh, here and there, but it doesn't change the fact that Nigerians are not going to buy their businesses as Nigerians. I am doing that, and I'll keep doing it. Well, I want to say thank you. Alessa Wilcox is a chartered accountant and a public affairs analyst. Michael Achimogu is a media consultant. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It's always been pleasure. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we'll be discussing the...
uh, situation within the APC and of course the Muslim-Muslim ticket debate that is still ongoing. Stay with us.